Vinny Centuri, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome into the game here in Tuscaloosa. How you doing? Everything good? Everything's great, man. I'm, we're just trying to control and pace ourselves as we get to closer to Alabama football. Oh, my gosh. You and me both. I've been waiting for this all year long. Yeah, and you get to this point. Let me ask you, what is the biggest difference between a player and, and the fan side of things as you get this close that you can taste it? So I don't think there is too much of a difference. Both the players and the fans have been working, doing certain things, preparing for this. Um, obviously, the players just have a little bit more invested. They've been doing all the off-season program stuff. They've been running 110-yard sprints, running the stadium all summer long. And for the last uh, three weeks, they've been going through camp, which you know in Alabama is tough. It's 110 degrees. Coach Saban's making you go practice at about 12 o'clock in the afternoon in the dead heat of the day to make sure you have the mental toughness and the uh, willpower to kind of power through the season. Vinny, what is Thursday practice? Can can you take us back to those Thursday practices, those two minute drills, run on run install, I guess, on, on Tuesday, passing really day on Wednesday, and then they tie it all together on Thursday. What's those like? You know, those are those are the days where you fine tune everything. It's the th- it's the plays that you've seen all week. It's the plays that Coach Staven and this and this coaching staff have put together that they believe that they're gonna see and that uh Louisville will come out and try and do probably in the first half and Louisville will obviously make adjustments during the game and show you stuff that you didn't anticipate and halftime will come and then that's when coach Saban and Tosh and all those other guys will make the adjustments at halftime to prepare the the team for the rest of the game so but is Thursday is it still even though you're so close to game time my understanding is still pretty physical out there oh it's it's real physical you're going good on good you're going against the first team ones on ones twos on twos coach Saban wants to put them in the situation like Tua was put in all season long so that he was prepared for be- being thrusted into a position like that so he always wants to make sure you're going good on good because whenever haha Clinton Dix is going against Am- Amari Cooper they're both making each other better because they're both the best at what they do but is it that a risk though because you hear other people like I was talking to a friend of mine and he's talking about you know, Thursday's a walkthrough for a lot of places, but it is maybe that's what separates Alabama that they don't let up. Thursday is a very difficult, even though you're so close to, to the game time. You know, I put it this way. Alabama has won so many national championships for a reason. Coach Saban has this down to a T, and he knows exactly how to operate, how to push the guys, how to make sure they're prepared for a game. And, I, I mean, if you other places can do it how they want to, but I guess the uh, – the pedigree and the uh, national championship speak for themselves in Tuscaloosa. Vinny, inside that building, in in those 105 players, or maybe it's 125, including a lot of the scout walk-on guys that are play a very crucial role, and I don't want to ever undervalue those guys, but do you think they know who's going to be the starting quarterback? Oh, they know. They already know who the starting quarterback is. And if you look at statistics and you see how people performed in the uh, – in the scrimmages and in practice, all everything I'm hearing is it's Tua. I think he's performed at a high level. I think in the first scrimmage when he threw the three touchdowns and looked good, looked poised, looked healthy, I think that was the uh, end-all, be-all for uh, Jalen. And I think he's either going to have to look at transferring, which I think would be really negative for him, or changing positions, which I think is the most beneficial thing for him and his career. Well, but but – Vinny, how hard is that to do, though? I mean, if you're you're seeing the writing on the wall, you know, maybe it's not set up for you. Maybe this other guy's beat you out. I mean, obviously, that's a that's a humbling experience to have to go through that mentally. Oh, it's definitely a humbling experience. But Coach Saban will be the first one to tell you that if he believes in you, then there is the possibility of you being very successful at it. I came in as a linebacker, and they had some injuries at safety. And he brought me in his office, and he said, Vinny, we know we brought you in as a linebacker. We know that everybody thinks you're undersized as a linebacker, but I believe with these injuries and all this other thing, all these other things, I think you can have a lot of success at this position, and you're very intelligent. You can learn, and I trusted him, and I bought in, and I was able to play as a freshman. I was able to contribute as a freshman, and then it kind of progressed me into my sophomore and junior years where I was able to go play in the NFL. And I think if you look at Trey Burton, who is – not as talented, I think, as uh, Jalen Hurts or had the success that Jalen has had. And he was able to do it and just got paid in the NFL 
for a a good contract for a number two tight end. I think Jalen should be able to see that Coach Davin has his best interest at heart, and I think he could have a lot of success if he does listen to Coach Davin. Vinny, I, w- I want to bounce this off of you, and, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Uh, I heard Saban yesterday post-practice say that Mike Loxley was going to be in the booth. Uh, to me, that's also a hint, too, because – I think Tua Tungavailoa, when he looks at a defense, we've watched him dissect it. I know he's young, uh, but it looks like his reading a defense is, is maybe further ahead than what you expect a sophomore. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you 110%. I have never seen, I mean, po- possibly, but I have never seen a quarterback that is a true freshman come into a national championship game down 17 points with his back against the wall having limited experience, come out there, perform like he did. He had, he had some mistakes, but I guarantee you he made less mistakes than a lot of other people would have made in that position. And he, on the game-winning pass, he dropped back, knew it was covered too, knew that the corner didn't reroute the wide receiver outside the numbers, knew that he could hold the safety on the hash if he looked the other way and threw it blindly to a freshman wide receiver also. So I think his knowledge, his awareness, and his ability is going to speak for itself this season. The biggest concern for me is the defense this year. And I, I want to work her there, but I want to I want to spend just a minute here. Uh, Kirk Herbstreet and Nick Saban, obviously, are, are there, there's a relationship. There's some rapport with each other. Kirk Herbstreet went on ESPN just a few days ago, and I'm going to read you a quote. He said, if I see Tua Tungvaloa trot out there for the first snap, I'm just going to say to everybody, I'm sorry because it's going to be a long year for you and they're going to literally score 45 to 50 every game. Kirk Herbstreit apologizing to the rest of college football if Tua Tungvaloa trots out there with all this talent and weapons on the offensive side of the football. That's a big comment. It's a huge comment, and it's by someone that is not an Alabama fan, played at Ohio State, very neutral opinion, but it's an opinion that a lot of college football fans are already kind of coming to the conclusion to. You have a guy that had limited experience come in in the highest level. I don't care who you are. You're, there's, there's so much pressure whenever you come in in that situation. And he handled it perfectly. And he's a humble kid. He's willing to work. And I've been, I've been saying this since I saw him do a two-minute drill in the Sugar Bowl practice. I call him Russell Wilson 2.0. I think he is able to move in the pocket. I think he keeps his eyes downfield. And I think he goes through his read progression better than I've ever seen a young guy. When you look at to a tongue of Alo and what we've been able to give him praise, how is, in your opinion, how helpful is that for those newcomers at defensive back at all the different spots to go up against that type of, of eliteness at that position, help them prepare for the challenge that's going to be on Saturday evening in Orlando? I think it's the best thing that you could have. I think that's why Alabama is always so successful because when you have these young guys come in, and they kind of, they have they have to have a, have a little bit of a reality check. These guys come in and they think they're the greatest. They've been the greatest in high school. Everybody's been praising them. And then you gotta get to Alabama, and Coach Saban's gonna kind of bless you with a little bit of reality. You aren't you aren't the top dog anymore. You now you're just a, another one of the guys on this team that has to go out and prove yourself. And whenever you have to go against Najee Harris, Damian Harris, Tua Tagovailoa, and that offense line that Alabama has, it's gonna make you mature a lot faster than going somewhere else would do. And it's not easy, but it also makes the players at Alabama so special. We are talking to Vinny Sensori right now, former defensive back, former safety at the University of Alabama. He also played his senior year at Northridge High School uh, there for the Jaguars, played all over the field. I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a guy that played this many positions uh, at 6A program here in high school football. Uh, Vinny, what will be key things that you will be watching early on to give you maybe some some assurance that this secondary is going to be okay. What are you going to be keyed in? If you can maybe bring it down to layman's terms and some things that you're going to be watching early on to see if these guys are on the same page. All right, so so layman's term, Alabama's defense is a formation recognition defense. And what that means is each call probably has three or four different defenses built into it based upon what the offense comes out in, whether it's slot, uh, pro, pro like a loaded formation which means everybody one side with the x and c receiver opposite and what i believe our uh louisville is going to do is exactly what they did in 2010 
at Arkansas. I think they're going to do a lot of 21 and 12 personnel. I think they're going to shift motion and try and confuse these young guys and get them into a bunch of different uh, defenses and have to make them communicate, which if they've been practicing this and they have the confidence will be easy. But if they haven't been able to master the different, the shifts and motions that are, I mean, uh, Louisville can come out and they might have a little trouble at first. And I think the first three drives of the game are going to be a tell all be all of how Alabama secondary is going to be able to handle that. We're talking to Vinny Sensuri, former Alabama player, national champion winning uh, defensive back. Vinny, let me, let me ask you, when you look at Bobby Petrino, if you were in his shoes, what would you do? And I know it's almost reversing that on the other side, but what would you do uh, to try to get these guys all confused and, and, and try to take advantage of, of a young, inexperienced secondary? I would do what I just said. You you have to try and confuse them. You have to try and make sure that you go from cover three to cover two and everybody's kind of settled down. They anticipated the motion, but then you do a motion or a shift that you haven't shown in the past that these guys haven't seen. And that will bring you back to cover three. Well, if you don't communicate that fast enough and you and the offense is able to snap the ball when half the defense is playing cover two and half the defense is playing cover three, that could be a big problem because if the corner is thinking he's playing cover two and he's playing the flat, and the safety thinks he's playing cover three. He's in the middle of the field. You have a big void in, the, in that deep third, and that can give up. That can be a lot of problems. And that's what happened in 2010 against Arkansas. And Ryan Mallett, in the beginning parts of the game, took advantage of that. So I think that's exactly what he's going to do again. He's going to try and confuse these young guys and create big play opportunities. Because if you watch Alabama in the past, only a quarterback that can complete the deep ball and stretch this defense out has success against these Alabama defenses. Vinny, when you look at at man, I'm, I mean, I'm guess I'm I'm a little bit of anxiety about this defensive secondary. But you look at the front seven; there's tons of talent there. Uh, you look at Tosh Lapoy, and maybe he's never really set up a back end of a you know the third level guys. Is, is there some anxiety there, knowing uh, that that he's never been in this situation? So, everybody going into a season not knowing what the season is going to bring has a certain type of anxiety. Now, whether it's good or bad is depends on the player. I always was really nervous going into every game, but that kind of prepared me for the game. It allowed me to know that I needed to go out and handle all my P's and Q's before the game so that whenever I stepped on the field, everything kind of fell into place. And I think that's what Coach Stalen's going to try and let happen for Tosh. He's going to put him in the hardest situation all camp. He put him in the hardest situation during the spring, and he probably – went at Tosh a couple times saying that this wasn't how he wanted to do it. This isn't how you call a defense in this certain situation. But now Tosh knows how to call a defense, knows how Coach Saban wants the defense to be called. And I think he's going to have a lot of success. He might call some things early on that aren't exactly what Coach wants, and Coach Saban might get fired up a little bit. But I think throughout the year he's going to progress and he's going to become a good defensive coordinator, just like Kirby Smart and Jeremy Pruitt were able to do. Vinny, how close – did you have a chance to watch some of the rolling with the Tide, the training days on ESPN? So I live in New York, and I got asked that question so many times, and I tell everybody the exact same thing. I don't have to watch it because I know exactly what Coach Dave and Coach Cochran and all those guys are going to say, and I can't have that deja vu go through my head too many times. <laughs> I got you. I got you. with it, And that's good. I was just going to ask you how close uh, to reality was it because it, was, it gave us outsiders – you know, a peek behind the curtain a little bit and kind of showed us what you guys really go through. Oh, it's, it's, that's exactly how it is. There is no sugarcoating it. it is, it's not like hard knocks where they're going to try and play it up and say all kinds of crazy stuff that they wouldn't say. That's exactly how it is every day in camp on in, in an Alabama Crimson Tide jersey. They are going to push you to the extreme limits. They're going to see how tough you can be mentally. They want to see how tough you can be physically. And if you can make it through that, and grow from it, then you're going to have success during the season. And Coach David knows that. That's why he does it that way every single year, year in and year out. Vinny, final question. Outside of Alabama, what game are, are you maybe most looking forward to watching? What, what, what game outside of the Crimson Tide are you looking uh, forward to grabbing and, and, and sitting down for a few hours and watching? All right. So th- are you talking this weekend? Yeah, yeah. No, no, season? no. Yeah, yeah. This weekend. This weekend. Yeah. So I, I can't wait to see that LSU game. I think it's going to be a lot closer than what people think. I think they have a lot of talent. And I think um, 
Coach Orgeron over there is going to have them prepared, and I think they're going to have an opportunity to win that game and kind of shock college football into knowing that LSU is kind of on the rise and on its way back. And I think that's good for the SEC because a lot of college football has a lot of uh, good teams, and for the possibility of a Georgia or an Alabama or a Florida to go to the SEC championship and lose and have the opportunity to possibly make the playoff, it, it, the SEC is going to have to be strong and win those type of games. Hey, Vinny, we're, we're also looking uh, forward to this Auburn-Washington game. This one grabs us a little bit, the one over at ATL. It's 2.30 on Saturday afternoon. That's another uh, very intriguing matchup with Chris Peterson uh, and Gus and all the guys down in, in Lee County. Yeah, I think – I think that's going to be a good game, but I do think Auburn wins. I think they have great experience. I think they have an unbelievable quarterback that is now in, has been in this scheme for a little while and has a lot of confidence. And I think that's going to be one of those games this year that Alabama might not be able to survive that Auburn Iron Bowl this year. Um, I know that's probably not a popular opinion, but it's, it's going to be tough. And I think it's going to be Auburn or uh, Alabama coming out of the West this year in the SEC. Well, hey, listen, we get you on to give a fair analysis. You've always done that. I appreciate you uh, for being a part of the show, and I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, hopefully, we'll be breaking it down next week. I thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Roll tight, and uh, can't wait to see the outcome of this game.